Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's video will be episode two in our Python practice problems for Python interviews um, and really general Python skills. I mean, for beginning coders who want to develop talent, you don't have to have an upcoming interview with Python for this to be useful. But this will be episode two. We covered some basic four conditions and a lot of Boolean checks in episode one. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and check that out. We're not going to be covering as much of the basic syntax of Python. We are going to assume you have a little familiarity with the different variables. So if you need a tutorial uh, course, there is one on this channel. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that. But without further ado, let's get into the practice problems. Problem four. Provided a positive integer and a string variable, output a string that is copied as many times as the integer specifies. So you're going to be given a string and an integer and you're supposed to output a copy of that string as many times as the integer calls for. So I suggest pausing the video now if you'd like to attempt it before we discuss the solution together. Okay let's go ahead and take a look at the solution for this problem. So we'll call this, we're going to create a function and we're going to call it duplicate string and the two variables are going to be We'll call it just str. Yeah, we'll say string, be descriptive. And then integer, we will just call it integer. No one has to worry, wonder about anything. <clears throat> and we will make our output just a blank string variable to start, we'll call it result. And then we will say for i, that's a counter variable, in the range, and the range will just go up to the integer that we were given. And as many times, so this is saying every time, as many times as the integer gives us, run the code inside this for loop. And inside the for loop, we're going to say the result, that variable we defined before, it's just blank on the first iteration, is equal to itself plus our string variable. And so then, we go ahead and return the result. And this should do it. So to test this, we're gonna go ahead and run. We're gonna print it out so that we can see it. But we're gonna run duplicate string and let's do string test. And let's do that twice. And then let's do one other one. And this will say code is fun and we will do that four times because code is that fun so here you see we get test twice and then we get code is fun code is fun code is fun code is fun all work and no play and right there that's the solution to problem number four uh, if you have any questions or any um, inquiries about variations or if other ways of writing this is valid feel free to drop a comment um, or ask any questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to get back to you on that. So that's solution four. Problem five. Given any string that is not blank, return the string incrementally added together one additional character at a time. See example. So given pizza as a string, return P, P-I, P-I-Z, P-I-Z-Z, P I Z Z A. So we basically take the length of the string and do one character at a time, adding one character each iteration until we get a string that looks like it being added together slowly. So if you'd like a second to attempt this on your own, I recommend trying that now. Go ahead and pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to take a look at the solution. Okay, so we'll we'll create a function just like we always do, and we will call it string separated and all this needs to receive is our actual string variable and to start we're gonna create a blank string just like we did in the previous example and this time we're gonna use that same counter variable for i in but we haven't been given an integer yet the range for our for loop is actually going to be the length of our string variable so again, we're assuming that you know some basic Python syntax for these practice problems. A for loop where you define the range, which is the number of times it iterates. 
and then this len function is returning is actually pulling the number of characters inside of your string variable and so the number of times we want this to run is the length of the string so each time that it runs we want it to add to the previous string that we've already created as well as our string variable for however many characters we've gotten up to with our counter so obviously the first time this runs it's technically zero but we want the first character so it's going to be i plus one and then we're gonna return the result after our for loop has completed so let's go ahead and print this and we'll do it we'll, we'll say pizza since that's the one we already uh, have up above and we should be able to make sure it runs just like expected p p i p i z p i z z p i z z a let's do something wacky like uh, Michigan that's wacky I don't know it's not that wacky you can see right away how long this gets I mean but you can clearly see just M, M, I, M, I, C, M, I, C, H, M, I, C, H, I. So the code is clearly working. Um, one thing I'll touch on real quick, even though I'm kind of assuming you know how you can address indexes within strings for this example. This colon is how you define a range of indices. And if you don't put a value before the colon, you're saying start from the beginning. So what you could have done is you could have gone from i to i plus 1. And what you'll see is there, you're actually just grabbing one character at a time. You've created a range of characters. And every time it increments, it's just incrementing to the next character. So this colon is how you define a range of strings to include in your, in your uh, result. But... Um, the, the way indices work is it counts the starting point and it doesn't count the end point. Um, so that's why on the first iteration it only gives us the M. It doesn't give us MI because it's finishing at 1. It's not finishing at 2 and counting 1. It finishes at 1 and doesn't count 1. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to drop a comment. Otherwise, that's the solution to problem 5. Problem 6. Given an array of integers, return true if the sequence contains 3, 2, 1, in order at any point. So this will be fun. This is our first exposure to integers in this code series, but it uses some of the indexing that we used for our previous string example. So that's the last hint I'll give. I recommend pausing the video now if you'd like to take an attempt at the solution on your own. Otherwise, we'll go through it together. I'll just shift that. So just like always, we're going to define a code. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, of course, we're going to define a function, and we'll call this array three two one, and we'll be given. Uh, well, it tells us we'll be given integers, and so that's the title of the array we're passing in. And then we're going to use a for loop again, just like before, um, but this time we've we've seen range with a defined number of iterations and we've seen range where we check the length of a string this time we're actually going to check the length of our array of integers but because we're checking a series of three we're not just checking a value we're checking a value and the two after it it doesn't make sense to check the entire array because we know when we get to the end of the array there's no point in checking anymore because we're assuming that if the last two values of the array are 3, 2, or 3, and then the array starts with 1 or 2, 1, that does not count. It has to be in order. Um, that's just the assumption we're making to code for this problem, but so the length we're actually checking is the length of the array minus 2, because as we get to the end of the array, we don't want to check anymore. And what we're checking is actually if the integers at i are equal to 1 and oh you gotta spell it right and the integers at i plus 1 are equal to 2 and that integers at i plus 2 are equal to 3 I'm sorry I've got this backwards 3 2 and then 1 integers 
And if those are all true, then we return true. And that is the only scenario where we want to return true. So else return false. If integers, it's got to be capitalized. And then let's make sure I didn't do anything silly here. And that should do it. So we'll go ahead and test this real quick by, oh boy, I've lost my mouse. Let's go ahead and print array three, two, one, and let's give it an array of one, one, three, two, one. So there's one that we would expect. Now let's throw four, five on there just to be fun. There's one we would expect to return true. And let's give it a second one where instead of three, two, one, that is three, two, one, three, four. Four, five, shake it up a little bit. So I'm expecting true because we have three, two, one, and then false. I do this kind of quick. We'll see if I messed it up. So let's take a look. What have we done? If integers I. Num three. Two, oh, I see. We're actually returning false every iteration of the loop. This actually needs to be outside of the for loop. <coughs> there we go. So that was my mistake. We put the return false inside of the for loop. And even if this is true once, then what it's actually returning is just the last one it's going to execute. So for both of those, since it didn't finish on true, it gave us false. The return false needs to be outside of the for loop. That way we only get a true in the situation where it's true. So that's that's a sample problem using arrays and, and addressing a range of index values. If you have any questions on those um, or would like to see more sample problems on anything specific, please just drop a comment or leave a like and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Let me know there's some interest in the channel and that really helps me with putting out these videos. So. Feel free to get in touch if you'd like to see something specific. Otherwise, I appreciate you checking out the channel, and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.